Hi, my name is Joe Krober and welcome to my garage. I'm a mechanical engineer, an AMP, and a private pilot. And I have a huge interest in general aviation power plants. This is a McCulloch aircraft engine developed in the late 60s. So this engine never went into production. A little brief description about it. It's a radial engine. It's five cylinders. It is direct gasoline injected and has uh, twin spark plugs like a traditional aircraft engine. Uh, it is 190 cubic inches. It's a uh, two-stroke, if I mentioned that already. It has a speed reduction unit on here. It's belt drive. So the engine itself runs at full power at 3600 RPM. And the prop would then run at 2700 RPM. And at full power, it produced 270 horsepower. Um, so from the research that, I, that I've done, I have found that they did put one of these prototypes in a Cessna 337 Skymaster as the rear pusher engine. Um, I do not believe that this prototype is that engine. Um, so as you can see, it is a, a very interesting, unique, compact little engine. Um, and um, as we go around it, I think I'm just going to start talking about the things that I noticed first and then and, uh, go from there. So, this is a radial five cylinder. You can see these cylinders here. Number one, and it's got a little marking right there. I circled it with a Sharpie pen, and each cylinder has its mark marking one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, it's direct injector, uh, it's twin spark plugs. And then as you go around, you see number two cylinder, number three cylinder, number four cylinder and number five it has twin magnetos that are geared off of an accessory drive on the front of the aircraft engine right up here on top um, this engine is water cooled the water pump would have been located on this these mounting studs and been driven off of this accessory drive right here it was missing when i received this engine right here um, is a uh, starter mount that is missing the starter when I receive the engine. It's an exposed gear so they could have a, a traditional starter I su assume. The rest of the gear train is, is uh, for the accessories is behind the cases and covers there. Um, right here I believe is an oil scavenge pump. From the docu documentation I know about this engine was dry sump lubricated or it had a dry scavenge system. The Heartbeat of the engine it is an injection pump that direct injects the gasoline into the cylinders. Right here, this little guy, I believe, is high pressure oil to run over to the turbocharger, which is missing on this, this prototype. It had a belt reduction drive, so it has this direct off the crankshaft would have come out the center. And then belt drive up to this reduction unit. Okay. On the back side, we find some more interesting features of this engine. There's a collector. That's the exhaust collector coming together. Right there would have been where the turbo would have been mounted, and then the turbo would have fed back into this intake. And then this intake runs into an impeller that's directly connected to the crankshaft and uh, added some boost pressure and flow to pump air through the two-stroke two when you had uh, low speed or off idle conditions and the turbo would have not been spooled up. Came off pretty easy, noted that a couple of the hardware pieces were not AN hardware and were, were rusted. All the bolts uh, off and I'm about ready to pull the cover off of this um, where the supercharger is. So here we go. All right. Ooh, very interesting. Look at that. Uh, nice little re-entry kind of design. Interesting. Looks clean and nice. But I was expecting to see some impeller wheels, and what I see, it looks more like a flywheel. Okay, I got the flywheel off, and as you can see, it's quite. Quite pretty actually inside there. Um, flywheel came off pretty easy, got it set over here. It's got a little pilot in the center. And then in here we've got a whole series of hardware mounting the outside flange of the impeller section. 
and then it looks like a flange that holds the main bearing for the crankshaft. So that's uh, pretty in interesting. I didn't know if this was going to be the cases coming together to make a um, <clears throat> bearing mount or if it was going to be a separate case or separate uh, flange to hold the main bearings. Alright, that was pretty easy. And there's the impeller ring. Okay, I got one of the exhaust collector stacks or the exhaust stack right off the engine uh, off. And you can see right there how it looks when it comes off. You can see the piston right in there. That piston is up and you can see the wrist pin. Uh, that would be the exhaust port. And then if you look down deep inside here, that's where the intake is. All right, here's the engine with all the exhaust stacks removed. Um, the back is about as clean as I can get it. I can't go any further because that uh, main back plate is below the engine mounts. So that'll be a separate disassembly once the engine is, uh, all the accessories up front are removed and the engine I can pull off of its uh, engine stand. So probably start by removing magnetos and injection pump and some of the accessories, scavenge pump, and uh, work my way back towards the base of the engine, the base piston section. So here we are, we removed the injectors from the engine all on the uh, top of the cylinders there. Here is an injector pulled apart, all the little pieces. Okay, I'm about to take the mag and the injection pump off. I've dial indicated the engine to top dead center on number one. And I've noticed that on this lower pulley, there's a mark on the front of the case, and then there's three marks on the pulley itself. You can kind of see them there, they're very small. The top of the three, when you're lined up with that mark on the case, is top dead center. Okay, I just removed the injection pump. It has a three stud mount with a internal spline driving it. Okay, got both magnetos removed. All right here we are uh, loosening up the top pulley to remove the belts. The reduction unit is kind of a split case, so we loosen those top two bolts and then these two bolts. And then with a spanner wrench, we're able to hook into those um, drilled holes and then uh, pull the thing over center and, and loosen up the belts. Okay, you got the belts removed and the upper pulley is just an idler, spins easy. Um, it's on tapered roller bearings from the, the drawings that I've seen. Um, we'll get into that and probably take that off next. The um, did notice that it's solid steel, so it was obviously not used for in an aircraft, but just trying to get an inertial mass uh, for rotation. All right, we got the upper pulley off. Um, you can see here it was on a shaft that's got an eccentric center line, so that's what we were turning with the spanner wrench to loosen the belts. And down here you can see the, the upper pulley and one of the tapered bearings and the retaining nut and retaining lock washer. Alright, here we got the propeller speed reduction unit off of the, the engine. so. Right up there, it, uh, it just came straight off. It's a spline connection to the crankshaft. Uh, on the outside of the reduction unit, there is the prop governor mount, and that's just a blanking plate right now with the uh, oil pressure in and, and out ports. And then you can see the shaft that would, have, that would be connected to the crankshaft. Okay, we got the front, which I'm calling the outer case all um, loose and ready to go. So I'm calling the propeller speed reduction unit, the outer case, the inner case, and then the power section. So as far as we can tell everything's loose so we're going to try to just start tapping it and see if we can get it to come off. Okay, I got the uh, front cover off and then I marked all the gears with little tags on what each one is. Try to get a close-up shot of that so we can archive which 
gears what okay I got the uh, inner housing off and it was quite a pain in the rear end here's the back of the housing it is totally full of corrosion okay got the plate that was intermediate between the uh, case and the power section you can see the water jackets and water jacket passages okay I've got the engine stand laid on its back you can see here so I can uh, unmount the uh, engine mounts from the from the stand and then I'm going to take the engine and lay it over on its nose and I built this stand right here that the spline on the face of the engine uh, crankshaft will drop right into this uh, machined up collar so then I can disassemble the engine in a horizontal fashion from there forward alright we got the engine dropped over on off of the uh, engine stand and onto this little stand that I got built to uh, pilot right on the end of the crankshaft Alright, here's the engine with one of the cylinder sections removed. Um, I removed the number one cylinder. Uh, here are all the cylinders removed. See they come off and uh, actually look pretty small when they're all individual. And then there's the crankshaft with the connecting rods, pistons. Alright, Joe here again. I've got the McCulloch Aircraft parts and an assortment of them, not all of them, and I brought them here to Amcon. And this is Rita. And she's going to uh, take an XRF gun, which is an X-ray fluorescence gun, and shoot some of these parts so we can determine the alloy that uh, they used for these parts. So, say hello, Rita. Hello. So, I think the first one we're going to do is this uh, main bearing flange and then just look at the bearing itself. Alright, and the gun is telling us it is either a CDA 630 or 955, which would be a bearing bronze, which makes sense, so um, as it is the main bearing. And uh, we'll continue on, I'll go through all the rest of the parts, won't bore you with all the details, but we're going to go through and document each one and uh, keep that list um, so I have that for reference. Okay, here I am with the disassembled engine. Got the information back from the XRF gun and documented all that. Uh, it, was, it was primarily the power section that I was focusing on. And, um, and then I took the components of the power section and went ahead and modeled them up in 3D CAD so I'd have an accurate representation of what this engine looked like before I start the rebuild or uh, restoration process. Um, I did start a little bit of the restoration. Uh, I got the cylinders here all cleaned up and I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, and then I started working on this inner case piece which where the heavy corrosion was. Um, and it, it's pretty bad. It's actually corroded clear through in a couple spots. And as I was cleaning it up, I realized why the corrosion was so heavy it was because this is magnesium and not an aluminum alloy as I assumed when I was starting. And I started looking at some of the other components, and a good portion of the cases and outer housings of this engine are, are actually magnesium. So they're really going after a, a lightweight uh, engine setup. Um, so this will be a challenge to repair. Uh, so that uh, pretty much concludes the teardown of this engine. I will leave you with a, a 3D animation of the power section of this engine and then look for part two, hopefully, uh, when I uh, get to the restoration and rebuild of this aircraft engine. Uh, thanks for watching.